So, good evening, good evening, good evening. After a slightly ropey start there, uh, tech-wise, we are live now. Good evening if you are here live. It is, what, the 22nd of August 2022. It is five past nine. Going to be with you guys till 10 p.m. tonight. If you're watching on the replay, please leave me a hashtag replay um, just so Twitter's algorithm lets me know that you uh, you watched. And if I can answer any questions for you, tag me um, in any questions during the stream and I'll, uh, I'll get back to you. Or Petch, our community manager for us on this, will get back to you as well. So tonight, got absolutely loads to talk about. Um, I was just saying before we went live live, for those people who stay on till the end of this broadcast as well, I'm going to give you guys exclusive access to a podcast that isn't coming out uh, for everyone else until tomorrow morning. It's a podcast with seven times BAFTA winning executive producer Nicola Schindler, who is responsible for bringing us TV shows like It's a Sin, Years and Years, Happy Valley, Scott and Bailey, Last Tango in Halifax, um, Hillsborough, uh, I mean, just some of the biggest TV dramas ever created. I got to sit down with Nicola for 60 minutes in her office at a brand new production company she set up with ITV Studios called Key Street Productions um, and just had a fascinating chat about the business of the business. A lot of time, as actors, we never really hear anything about pre-production of a, of a TV drama or comedy. Uh, we never hear really anything um, about post-production, bar maybe you'll go in and do a bit of dubbing or something like that. And we never hear anything about funding. Like literally, like how you make these mammoth shows that are two, three, five million pounds an episode. Um, so I sat down with Nicholas, who was very kind to give me an hour, and we just dived into that. And also, from an executive producer's point of view, you know that person in TV is right up at the top of the chain. Um, I don't think a lot of actors realise that it, you know it's the executive producer. Well, in Nicholas' case, um, she watches every single audition tape. I mean, literally every single one, whether you have one line on one of her productions and right up to the lead roles. Nicola is involved in the casting process all the way through. So people might think, oh, if you've got a little part in a drama, maybe you've only got two or three lines, you know, like the exec producers, they're not bothered about that. In Nicola's case, I don't know if it's across the board, but in Nicola's case, she really, really is. So if you're ever, you know, auditioning for anything that Key Street Productions are going to make in the future, they've just uh, made Russell T. Davis's new Nolly drama, and there's a brand new drama they just announced uh, today as well. Uh, there's, there's their second drama that they've greenlit. Um, if you ever audition for Nicola, any of her, her shows, she will see your tape. Not to put any pressure on you, like, but, you know, um, stick around, though. I will give you access to that at the end of this uh, this broadcast if you uh, if you stay till the end and um, lots of other things to talk about before that though um, let me go over to acts on this.tv if you're watching this and you've never watched one of our broadcasts before you might not even know what acts on this.tv is ultimately it's a website I created now 12 years ago every week we sit down with the biggest casting directors agents actors writers producers in TV and Dave yeah, Dave and dive <laughs> behind the scenes and um, really of what it takes for you to be a more successful actor. You know, if it's a casting director that I bring on, we go into real detail with them on, you know, what you need to do to be landing more auditions with them, with that particular casting director. If it's an agent that we bring on, we dive into details of, you know, exactly what you have to do to sign with that particular agent. Um, so in the members area right now is over 200 hours worth of coaching, our previous coaching sessions, uh, ready for you to unlock instantly, as well as get invites. If you're a member of Acts on This TV, you'll get invites to the new features every single week. We had this guy on this week, really interesting chat that I know kind of blew a lot of people's minds because they don't, you know, the technology we speak about on this chat is very, very new. Um, this is titled Raise 50K, so £50,000 for your next TV project via NFTs with actor-producer Jason Mazza. Now, you might not have a clue what an NFT is, okay? Ultimately, NFTs are... These things that you can buy and trade um, on a new iteration of the internet. You'll have heard of blockchain, blockchain technology. I'm sure you will have heard of that because of cryptocurrency. Even if you just read it in a headline somewhere, you might have heard of Bitcoin or Ethereum or one of those kind of cryptocurrencies that's very popular. Uh, this is nothing to do with crypto necessarily. The blockchain technology behind crypto enables you to trade in these things called NFTs. And if you were an actor and you wanted to crowdfund your next film, rather than doing it traditionally via a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo campaign, um, you can now use NFTs. It's a, a whole new level um, of technology in order to raise finance um, you know, and give real-world utility to your backers. Um, by selling these NFTs on the blockchain. Um, I'm going to play a little two-minute trailer out of what you missed there. Don't be put off by the tech, right? If you're brand new to this kind of tech and blockchain, just think back to before you even use the internet, right? When the internet first came out, I was literally reading headlines, 
you know, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, like the internet's a fad. The internet's, you know, going to like just, you know, do nothing for us. It's going to, uh, you know, fade away. Um, look at it. You're watching this right now on the internet. And just think how much of, of your daily life is spent on the bloody internet. Um, you say you're watching me right now. Blockchain technology is the same. Okay, you're going to hear a lot of people kick back against this and they don't like change. And it's like, oh my God, you know, um, the same thing when, when uh, you know, train tickets started being QR codes and not paper. People, oh my God, I don't understand. I've got this ticket on my phone. NFTs is just the next iteration of that. Very similar in use to a QR code, but you just purchase them a different way. Um, have a listen to this. If you want to get access to the full chat, this is nearly a two-hour chat with Jason. He's an incredible producer, produced over 65 projects, starred in... I don't know, 25 of them or something like that. Oh, no, the, the other way around. He's been in 65 projects, some top TV, stuff, stuff like Sky One's Bulletproof, um, the new remake of Oliver Twist with Michael Caine, uh, the modern remake called Twist. That was like a £10 million pound movie um, that Jason produced. He produced about 25 of the top you know, 65 projects that he's been in. Um, but here's a little bit of what you missed if you want to get access to the full uh, the full you know, shebang, and all the other content that I talked about on actsonlist.tv. You can get a trial now for one pound if you go to actsonlist.tv forward slash trial. Um, get access, test it all out for seven days um, for just a quid. Actor, writer, producer, and star of so many hit TV shows, including The Drowning, Twist, and Bulletproof. He's back. It's Jason Mazza in the house. Who is Jason Mazza? And I've got some of your uh, some of your credits here. These are both acting and producing credits. She got me my first agent, and she's a fantastic first uh, agency. They're still around today, Elaine Murphy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and and I signed with her when I was like seventeen, I think. Acted for a number of years, and then got to the stage where I was like, I love this. But what I'm not loving is sitting and waiting for the phone to go. And that is when I turn my, my hand to producing. What sort of steps, I don't know if you had to break it down as a blueprint, would you recommend actors go through when they've got an idea, developing that into a script and then somehow, you know, making it stand the chance of getting on screen somewhere? Beat sheet that story. And so what I mean by that is it could be scene one, Jason wakes up in bed after having a nightmare. Scene two, and it's just one line. Getting into other people in the industry is always good as well. Some people get very nervous about sharing their work. Oh, I don't know, if, you know, I've never seen an idea like this. For me, I say that's nonsense. This is the big excuse, I have no money. So, okay, I can't do anything at all because I have no money whatsoever, okay? Enter the blockchain. Now built onto the blockchain, okay? And we're gonna take this really slow so we don't confuse people. You can transact and send these things called NFTs. This is the third part of the equation as well. Smart contracts. So now I'm hoping I'm going to give you an example of how you might use these three things to actually raise funds for this brilliant TV show or film that you have in your head and you want to move it from an idea to a script to the screen. I think we're like $600,000, $700,000 in, in, in about five or six weeks and we're still growing. I really want to be, if not the first, one of the first to, to really utilize NFTs in the film and, tele and television space. It doesn't matter whether you're a writer or whether you've got the idea to film something is, is to start and finish because unless you do that, you're never going to make a change. Boom, acts on this.tv if you want to get access to the full chat with Jason. You just heard him say there, I know it sounds like a massive figure, but that guy has launched his own NFT project and grossed nearly $700,000 in five to six weeks. Um, give me a, a yes in the chat <laughs> if you'd be happy with six or $700,000 uh, in uh, in five weeks. I'm just going to, uh, one second, I'm just realizing I'm going to tag everybody in the acts on this Facebook group that this uh, this broadcast is now uh going live uh let's have a look uh everyone hope you can join me let's have a look see if this works facebook groups have, and now enable you by the way to tag everybody in a post once a day um so apologies if you're in the facebook group and you end up seeing ross grants tag you in a post i can only do it once a day and hopefully i'm bringing you value uh if you don't think i am uh you can leave the group <laughs> Don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean as in like you can shut me up if you want to. Uh, hope you can join me now. And then I'll just put a uh, a smiley face. There we go. Let's see if this works. Actually, this will be quite interesting. Yeah, let me know if this works. If you're in the ads on this Facebook group and you're here live now, um, I'm just going to 
uh, leave that in a comment. Oh no, it's not. Just, it, 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 it pretended it was going to do it, and then it's not gone blue, which means it's not tagged everybody. I don't know why that's happening. That's a bug on Facebook, but you will be getting that soon. You will probably see me tagging you in some posts now and again. Uh, now you can do that. Um, it was working in the other Facebook groups that I've done it in, but it doesn't seem like it's working right now. Um, so let us know in the chat if you are right now looking to fund your own pro, you know, project. You're looking to maybe develop a TV show yourself, um, you know, anything like that, because uh, that is a really interesting chat with Jason. You will find that useful um, if you go over and you check that out. And if you were there live, let me know just like whether you found it overwhelming, because we we talked a lot about new tech. Um, in that obviously with the blockchain and NFTs and I, I understand it can be like whoa I don't understand this but like I say bear with it because you didn't understand the internet when you first did it you know you didn't understand cars you know when before you learned to drive and now you can drive you figured it out so don't use that excuse of like oh I wasn't brought up with technology I don't know how to use it you know you weren't brought up with anything that you probably use today and you use it. So, uh, you know, it's just a matter of just spending an hour or two really understanding that space and you will begin to actually, you know, begin to get it. Uh, definitely. Andrew says, found it very interesting. No, it was good. It was really good. And Andrea's is looking to uh, produce a film. She's got a feature film in pre, uh, pre-development right now. I found that podcast amazing. Nice one. Uh, nice one, Andrea. Ashley, how are you doing, man? I've seen you in ages. Hope you're good. And Tony's here from, uh, from Chi-Town, from Chicago. Um, hope you're good, Tony. Good for uh, good to see you here, mate. And I hope Tony got a baseball in the eye. He's a big baseball fan and basically went to a game. And, and I mean, it seems dangerous, Tony. We play soccer over here and we don't, you know, if the ball hits you in the face, you, you're not really going to hospital. If a baseball hits you in the face... Um, you 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 go into hospital, and I know Tony did, but I know you're fighting through, mate, and you're getting back on top of things. So uh, so good for you. Do let us know how you're uh, how you're doing. And Tom, what you're saying? The TV show I auditioned for is Outlander. Had an audition for a short film Sunday, and got an audition for the lead in a play on Friday. Tom, <laughs> Tom, you're just crushing it. Tom amazes me though. Tom, you are relentless, and that's why you get the opportunities that you get. You have what. The the two things that I preach about the most in the acting industry, if you want to succeed, are hard work and patience. And if you have just one of them, nothing will ever work for you because you'll work hard for a week. You've got no patience and you'll sack it off and you'll go back to your day job and you'll just complain about your life um, because you have no patience to continue working hard. If you have patience but no hard work, you won't work hard. and You'll go, oh, you know what? Yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. It's fine. It's all going to work out. I'm really patient. But when you mix patience with hard work and you actually take daily action consistently, even when this industry is punching you in the face, which it will do. I mean, you just expect that as well. You need to get used to that. This industry is absolutely going to beat you around the head with everything that it has. And you're going to be on the floor going, oh, my God, like, I just can't, I just can't get up. And you must get up. At some point, you must get up. And Tom, you keep doing that, mate. And that's why, <laughs> you know, you're getting all these opportunities. So good on you, man. Good on you. Natalie's written her first short as well, I can see here. She wants to develop it into a series and pitch it to Netflix. Nat, you should definitely watch that that session with Jace. Um, Indra said it's very useful, but very overwhelming. Absolutely, mate. In terms of the, the tech, when you first start looking into blockchain and NFTs, you'll go, oh my God, this is so new. I really don't understand it. I've probably done a thousand hours of work on it over the last sort of 18 months. And even there's parts of it, mate, that I'm like, I'm still not quite sure how to articulate that if I was explaining it to somebody else. Um, and Andrew, I forgot, mate, congrats on your role on Hollyoaks, mate. I mean, amazing. I noticed you post in the first TV role fast track group um, that you've got your first TV role on Hollyoaks. The acts in this community just absolutely crushing it. Um, so talking about life and in the industry punching you in the face brings me on to the next thing that I want to talk about, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need your help developing this. On October the 1st and 2nd this year, I'm going to be running an online weekend event, okay? It's a Zoom event. It's two days. Those people who have done First TV Roll Fast Track with me in the past will know how this works. Um, First TV Roll Fast Track, by the way, is a once a year 16-hour um, intensive on landing your first TV role fast. Andrew, who got his role on Hollyoaks, he was part of it. So many people on this on this call here um, today have been part of that and have now landed their first TV role, or some people multiple TV roles. But we taught that over a weekend live on Zoom, super intense, eight-hour days, uh, multiple special guests. Um, you get the recordings of it all, obviously. There was Facebook group support for 12 months after that, lots of bonuses and things like that. Um, I'm running a new event. Nothing to do with getting your first TV role, but it would absolutely massively help. Just because I've seen over the last six months, and I get it because life is getting harder right now it just is negativity is just louder than i've probably ever heard it before um that's partly down to the media who just absolutely love to scare the shit out of you 
um, tell you how much your energy bills are going to be next year. There's no way. I'm sorry. There's just no freaking way. The news that came out today going, energy bill is going to be £5,300 a year next year. There's absolutely no way. Unless you have a 10-bedroom mansion, right? You know, this is just my own real-world experience of energy bills and, and what I pay and, and actually how my bills have been affected over the last year, which right now I'm actually paying less because I've had a lot more heat in the UK than, than usual. My heat has not been on nearly as much. I'm not even paying as much as I was paying this time last year. The media love to feed you with shit, negativity, make you feel bad. Look at the, oh my God, we've had a heat wave in the UK. People are going to die and there's going to be a massive drought. The hosepipe ban. We've just had torrential rain in Manchester all day today. There's no water shortage up here. Be careful what you like, what you're allowed to shape your view of the world because if you allow the media to do it you're going to live a, a pretty you know scarce life where you look at everything as a threat and scarcity is massive in your life um i've noticed a lot of that and i'm seeing it really affect actors and i've seen a lot of talented actors get in their own way if i'm brutally honest people who i know are really really good lose all motivation procrastinate um allow themselves to talk themselves out of doing things allow their emotions to completely um you know well th th they allow themselves to serve their emotions as opposed to you know learning how to make their emotions serve them um there's a lot of people who i know are great who are just taking no action to get what they want there's people who i know are great who are taking a little bit of action talking themselves out of doing any more and then just sitting there complaining if i'm being honest with you and i can't stand it i literally I'm allergic to hearing people complain about how they wish it was as opposed to how it actually is. Um, there's an abundance of acting work out there. There's an absolute abundance of voiceover work out there. I'm seeing so many new shows being greenlit. As I say, I saw uh, Key Street Productions' new show today. It's called, someone asked before, uh, Sally, I think you asked in the chat where, what it's called. It's called Significant Other. I don't know an awful lot about it. But if you just Google Key Street Productions significant other, you will see uh, you will see some some info on that. I don't know who's casting it. I don't know who's been attached. There are cast in place. So I don't know what's still being cast. Um, but ultimately, yeah, I really want to help empower people um, and stop people really just yeah getting in their own way and just I want to help people cultivate a mindset that's really going to serve them and you know is going to give them confidence in themselves it's going to motivate them internally so they just don't need external motivation all the time it doesn't last all that long um, and it's going to you know hopefully uh, empower people to go out there and ask for what they want so it's a full weekend training on something that I, I, I term bulletproof actor um, it's a program I actually created in 2014 it's no longer available, but I'm actually going to translate it into a two-day live event over a weekend, the 1st and 2nd of October. I'm doing it in association with a good friend of mine um, who is a high-performance positive psychology mindset coach, a guy called Matt Hall, who used to be an actor. He's dedicated the last three years of his life to science-backed high-performance positive psychology. So not airy-fairy, just read the secret, wish for things, and they're going to happen. This is real next-level positive psychology that you know elite athletes use to break world records, to push their bodies beyond what you know people previously thought humans were capable of it's real you know with empirical evidence that actually backs all this stuff up i'm going to take people through some frameworks over two days that hopefully will really leave you um with a bulletproof mindset where you will stop fearing other people's judgment of you and what people are going to think if you send an email or post something on twitter you know it's going to uh empower you to you know to take more action than you've ever taken before to go and get the thing that you want but to serve people best we want to know exactly what is affecting you guys the most. So I put together a survey. It's only going to take you five minutes. And I'd bloody love it if anybody watching this, I'm going to send it out on email. I'd love it if you would fill it in for me tonight, if you're straight after this broadcast, if, you, if, you know, if, if you're up for that, or at some point this week. I'm going to go over to, um, to my web browser and just show you where it's at. If you go to actonthis.tv forward slash survey, You'll find this page here. It's a very plain looking page. Just skip it distraction free. Um, and it's going to take you through some of these questions. And you might want to give me some live feedback if you're here on Facebook right now. Uh, ultimately, it starts off and just says, do you want to learn next level science about positive psychology hacks in order to crush anxiety, obliterate audition nerves and create the acting career of your dreams? If the answer is no to that, you don't need to fill any more of the survey in. <laughs> All right, but if the answer is yes, please keep going. And then the next question simply is, do you feel your current mindset is getting in the way of your acting career success just give me like a yes in the chat now if you do think it is because i know there's been so many points in my life where my mindset has, has talked me out of taking action there and then some things i've literally put off for a year because 
because of the voices in my head going, nah, people might judge you for doing that, or that might not be a good idea, or what if it goes wrong, what if you fail, what if you waste money, what if you embarrass yourself, and I've just looked back and gone, shit, why did I allow myself to sort myself out of that? Um, do let me know in the chat if you think that you do that when it comes to your acting career. The next question there, dead simple, what do you struggle with most when it comes to your mindset? Tick as many as apply to you. So general anxiety, maybe just generally you feel on edge right now because of the way that the world is and the way that the media is feeding you negativity every day. Statistically, we know that you will be fed 17 pieces of negative news for every one piece of positive news on the news. Generally speaking, most news shows give you a load of terrible news and they might say, oh, and now on a lighter note, the very last thing you hear amongst you know economic crisis crisis, war, nuclear war, World War Three, terrorism, all this other stuff that just drains you and leaves you with no motivation. You might get a little bit of good news at the end of the show, but on average, 17 pieces of negative news, statistically, that's a fact, will be fed to you for every one piece of positive. So maybe just general anxiety you struggle with. Audition nerves is another one. So you're super confident when you're actually you know, doing your audition piece in your room at home, and you've got the lines down, and you're ready to go, and then you get a little bit more nervous on the train or in the car on the way to the audition. By the time you get to the audition, you need a nervous poo. Then you go, <laughs> sorry, it's just, it's just my own experience, right? And then you're like, oh my God. And then you sit in the waiting room and you see somebody across from you who you recognize and you go, oh my God, they've been in that show. They're definitely going to get it. And then before you know it, you're walking into the audition and you're saying negative things to yourself, like don't forget your lines, don't forget your lines, don't forget your lines. Oh, you're probably not going to get it anyway. You're not good looking enough. All this internal dog shit that we feed ourselves before you go into an audition. Maybe that's you. So audition nerves is, is a big thing there. Confidence in your own ability. Even though you've been to drama school, you've been to acting classes for four years, maybe you still don't truly believe you're ever going to land that TV job or you're going to actually make it to any capacity. Motivation. Maybe you are talented. You know you are, but you're just like, I've no motivation. You think you're lazy. And you're like, I just don't want to, you know, I just can't be bothered. I'll send one email, but I'm bored now. Procrastination might be another thing. So that's not having, you know, no motivation. You want to do things, but maybe you are just like, oh my God, like I don't know which thing to do first. So I'm going to go and just clean the oven because I'll do that while I try and figure it out. And then the last thing there, put overwhelm. And that's when you literally are just like stuck. You just, you've got so many things on your plate with life. You don't know how to actually schedule things in. You don't know how to deal with your actual life compared to your acting career. It's all a mess. And you're like, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm paralyzed and I can't do anything. Um, so let me uh, let me know in the chat which, you know, which of those or all of those you might struggle with. That's part of the survey there. The next question is, if you could annihilate one of your choices above, which would it be and how would it um, help you move in your uh, move your acting career forward? So I want to know in your opinion, if you could maybe, uh, you know, obliterate audition nerves, well, that's going to move you, you, your career forward, isn't it? Because you're going to do a much better job of your auditions. Uh, maybe you've done self-tapes for so long, even the thought of going into a room to do an audition in front of a casting director petrifies you now. So let me know in that next question there, you know, if you could annihilate one of those things. Put the next question, do you believe there is anything outside of your control that is stopping you being successful? Be specific and tell me exactly what this is. So I don't want to, I don't want to give you any examples of that because I don't want to affect your answer. Um, but I want to know if you actually truly believe there are things outside of your control that are stopping you. And if you do believe that, what those things are. Some might be valid, some probably aren't. Um, and then I've got uh, three more questions or four more questions. What have you tried before to master your mindset that hasn't worked for you? Again, be specific. Um, you might have read The Secret and then expected a Ferrari to turn up outside your house and it didn't. It's definitely not <laughs> if, if you don't bother working. Um, what is the number one thing you want to learn when it comes to mastering your mindset? What's the number one fear you want to avoid at all costs? And that can be you know, to do with your mindset. Maybe your number one fear is that you never get over some kind of trauma that happened in an audition three years ago and has screwed you up to this day. Maybe that's a big fear of yours. Um, and then the last question there is, if you would like to participate in a free training to start mastering your mindset, just put your email in there. So if you go to actonlist.tv forward slash survey, fill that in for me tonight or just whenever you're listening to this or watching this. It'd mean the world to just give me some real world feedback. So when we do put this event on, in October, I know I'm going to absolutely address all of your concerns. So it's going to be absolutely tailored to the people who want to get involved and, and you know get involved in this survey. So there's going to be a free training initially covering a lot of this stuff. And then we're going to sell tickets. Um, you can get on the waiting list here if you go to actonlist.tv forward slash bulletproof. So there's, there's two URLs there. The first one is actonlist.tv forward slash survey. Fill the survey in. If you then want to get on the waiting list for the actual main event, go to atsonlist.tv forward slash bulletproof um, and you get on the waiting list for that as well. Um, but yeah, it, you know, um, 
It's a two-day event. Uh, we're going to do a free training first for everybody, but then we're going to sell tickets to this two-day two -day event. There'll probably be 100 tickets available for this. It's an online event. You can attend from anywhere in the world. Um, and it's uh, going to be a Saturday and Sunday on October the 1st and October the 2nd. Um, it's going to be with myself and some special guests, but particularly Matt Hall. I've got a video I'm going to play out of uh, a clip from one of Matt Hall's sessions that he's done with us before on Acts on This TV in a minute. Um, but let me know what that sounds like. I mean, I hope it's going to be useful for people. I probably get anywhere between six and ten um, emails a week from actors struggling when it comes to staying in the game if I'm being brutally honest with you like genuinely wanting to give up and these are actors who I know should be working could be working um, have the talent to be landing TV roles but their head is not in the game they have no mental toughness because it's been beaten out of them um, or they've just never been equipped with you know frameworks and strategies to make those paradigm shifts in the way that they're looking at the world that's going to empower them rather than disempower them. And it's going to, you know, a lot of these frameworks will help you create empowering beliefs about the world. And, you know, it'll help you annihilate the limiting beliefs you have about yourself, whether it's anything to do with yourself personally or the industry as a whole. As I say, like a traumatic event that's happened to you that you've not been able to see the gifts within and you're still reliving that on a daily basis and you're losing every single day. You know, I've had that in my life before. I've had some huge losses, massive, massive L's in my life. And at the time, I've been like, just dwelling, dwelling, God, dwelling in itself. It's fascinating. I have an inability to dwell now, but my God, I used to dwell so much. Something I'd, I'd, I'd have a loss, and then I would relive that every day. I'd, you know, whether that was a personal thing in my life or, you know, a big shit as well. Like, it, it could be literally, you know, my dad dying, a huge loss. Or something trivial, which would be like, you know, a role that I really wanted and really cared about. And I got down to the last two, and I didn't get it. You know, like they're obviously, you know, very different kind of losses, but I would dwell and I'd, I'd relive that loss again and again and again and again because I was not teaching myself to ask myself good questions, you know, and look for the positives. I know it sounds so incongruent with losing a loved one, going, what good is there in this situation that I cannot currently see? But you have to look for it. Otherwise, you will literally just be paralyzed for the rest of your life and you will relive that loss every single year or day or month or whatever. Um you know, for for in, in perpetuity, like literally forever. Um, so let me know, like you know, if it's something that you'd be interested in. But I, um, I really hope you know we can help people sort of you know take control of the um, you know of the the things that that are holding you back when it comes to your psychology and your mindset and just the way that you're looking at the world and and rewire your. Uh, you know, rewire the way that you uh, you are going about your career. I love Kerry. Kerry says, I do love a survey. Kerry, get it filled in for me. Actsonthis.tv forward slash survey. Uh, let us know. Nick says yes. Sophia says yes in terms of they, they believe their mindset is, is stopping them from taking action in certain things. Um, and, uh, and Sally Ann, yes. Yeah, so this is a two day uh, event online that we'll be holding in, uh, in October. Uh, Sarah says, every time I feel I can't carry on and rejections get too much, I listen to your podcast and it really helps me get motivated again. Yes, Sarah. Well, if you think if a podcast does that for you, my God, if you get involved in this event, like I'm so excited about it just because I know from when I, I launched the program, it's a five week program called Bulletproof Actor, Unstoppable Confidence, Infinite Success. That was like in 2014. And my God, the 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 number. Well, it changed hundreds of actors' lives. You know, it, I'm not bragging because it wasn't. You know, it was it was stuff that I've been taught over the years that I've cherry picked from some of the best. Uh, you know, positive psychology, you know, coaches in, in the world, really, you know, it was stuff that I was taught that I've gone, right, I like that. I'm going to take a bit from this and a bit from this guy, a bit from this girl and created this, this, this program that was super, super in depth. But I thought right now I like the, uh, we, we all live on Zoom, don't we, in a way because of the pandemic and stuff. And I like the immediate sort of access you get to people no matter where they are geographically. So previously, you know, I maybe would have held this as a live event in person, but if you're in London, You've got the ticket price of getting a train and a hotel maybe. I'm like, no, Zoom for me works when it comes to this. And because it's all recorded, it's all very simple to access again. You can go over it. We're probably going to have, we've not decided yet, but we're probably going to have a, a Facebook group specifically for this event that will probably be live for two months after the event where you will be able to ask follow-up questions as well um, and just share more personal experiences. Um, everything we're going to be teaching you is applicable to everybody. Um, you can apply it to any kind of adversity in your life. 
Um, but you might need a little bit more help, you know, on something very specific. So that Facebook group is going to be there for people. Um, and we're going to make it, I don't know exactly what the ticket prices are going to be, but obviously with the current financial climate, we're going to make it as accessible as possible. And probably, I think we're going to end up offering um, some installments, some payment plans as well, because um, I get it, you know, right now, finances for a lot of people are are not amazing, in myself included. <laughs> I would love it if I could just get a Euro Millions lottery win this Friday, but we, we shall see. We shall see. Anyone ever won more than a tenner, by the way, on a lottery? I haven't, ever. Do you know what? I did the postcode lottery as well for a year once. 30 quid a month. I didn't win a single thing. 30 quid a month. Nothing. Pointless. Um, but let me know. Maybe, you, um, maybe you've got an incredible uh, look you know, incredible uh, lucky streak and you've won some uh, some good stuff on the lottery. Uh, Kerry says the mindset is pretty good, but she gets exhausted with all the output for not much payback. Yeah, that can be another thing. Just, you know what, just building mental resilience. Kerry's a real thing as well. Um, you know, that ability to motivate yourself intrinsically. A lot of times, and I, and I love extrinsic, like external motivation as well. I listen, I, I choose to put positivity in my head every day. I literally will get up in the morning. One of the first things I'll do while I make my porridge is I'll put on a podcast from a few mentors of mine that I listen to online to, you know, to get myself G'd up for the day. But external motivation doesn't last that long. So I need to do that every single day. There's a lot of stuff that we can we can go into on this weekend uh, when we do this this program that will teach you how to cultivate internal motivation for yourself so that you don't have to rely on uh, you know that external stuff, and when you and when you utilize both of them, it means generally speaking, you're going to be motivated a lot more of the time to carry on. You're going to have, I don't care what anybody says, you know, you're going to have days where you, uh, you know, you're just like, oh god, I'm having half a day off today because I've had enough. Sometimes I'll do that, you know, I'll just go look. Mm, I kind of need to just focus on me today a little bit, and I'll just work, you know, in front of my computer here for half the day, and I go, I don't care if I'm not going to be as productive work-wise today i need to go and sort of like just look after my, myself for a bit and um i'll ask myself that there's a really good a, a great quality question to ask yourself when when you're feeling overwhelmed or stuck or unmotivated is what's the one thing that i could do now that's going to make everything else easier or unnecessary um and for me that's often like right i need to go for a walk and just get myself out of these four walls because i'm driving myself a bit crazy I'll go for a walk and I'll try and, you know, walk in nature a little bit if there's fields around or with a park or somewhere like that. And I'll put something positive on again, whether it's music or a podcast, and I'll come back. Um, and yeah, I might have had two hours out where I'm not working, but I'll be able to be way more productive for the following two hours than I would have been if I'd have spent the whole four hours in front of the computer. So building resilience and just learning, you know, strategies to uh, to help get through those days where you just have had enough. Maybe you've like, you just had one too many self tapes that month that you haven't got, you know, um, I saw, uh, I saw some great, you know, some, some, some great, great stuff on Twitter this week of people posting, you know, montages of all of their self tapes that they've had over the last few months, you know, just to show like the work that goes on behind the scenes. Um, as opposed to just the one tweet that's like, book the job. It's kind of like, yeah, you book the job, but you also take for 20 things you didn't book the job on. Um, so having that resilience to just keep going is super, super, uh, super, super important. Um, definitely. Um, Alice said that Matt Hall webinar was incredible. Yeah, well, Matt's back. So I'm doing this this event in conjunction with Matt and hopefully a couple of other people as well. I'm talking to some other actors. Um, one who's particularly well-known um to maybe come and just you know just give us an hour just basically of their their insight uh when it comes to mindset and, and psychology some people have really been you know have been there have been through it really struggled and now are working literally at the top of the game so that'll be a uh that'll be an interesting one um let's have a look uh ashley says why are we shaming dwelling not shaming dwelling ashley but if you could give me any you know if you could give me anything factual from your own life that you've that you've had that's that's positive out of dwelling it's a genuine question i want to know about it because in my own life if ever i've dwelled on a situation and when i talk about dwelling i'm talking about replaying the negative event over and over and over in your head and you know sort of uh there's no it's a difference between you know sitting with the emotion feeling it allowing it acknowledging it accepting it and articulating it that's healthy. It's really healthy to, to actually sit down and say, right, I, I'm, right, I'm accepting this. I feel shit today because this happened, right? So I've accepted it. Um, I'm then going to uh, 
you know, even well, when I say when I say uh, no, the first thing really would be acknowledging, isn't it? So you'd acknowledge it. You go right, okay, I'm feeling shit. You'd accept it, and then articulating it, saying it out loud, sharing it with somebody, is really healthy and really good way to deal with it. But sitting on that every single day for six months, pointless. Never, ever, ever brought me anything positive in my life. And I can't, I, I can't imagine anybody can give me a situation where it has been positive for them. Um, so that's what I mean about dwelling. An actor, you know, loses out on a part, and they've been through eight auditions for it, and they lose out. Yeah, of course. Have your two days where you, you know, you eat Haribo and you just, you know, you know, sort of spend time with your friends or whatever, go do something fun. But after that, what is the point? What is the point? It's like driving a car looking in the rear view mirror. What is the point? You're going to crash again every single time you try and start that car. So for me, um, it's about going, right, what what are the lessons within that? And that's a really healthy thing to do as well. What lessons are in this? What have I learned? Uh, you know, how has this helped me? You know, if I label this as a gift uh, instead of label it as a tragedy, what difference would that make to my life? You know, this relationship that ended, you know, if I actually attributed some, you know, some conscious blame within the situation as opposed to unconscious blaming where you'll go, right, that person. How many times I've heard this from people? They split up with their boyfriend or the girlfriend and they go, she's a bitch. He's a, he's a dickhead, you know, and, and it's all like, they're an idiot. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. And that's really unconscious blaming. It's never going to empower you. If you're going to blame somebody for the bad and the way they make you feel, you will win a lot of power back by going, actually, you know what? I've got to acknowledge the good you brought into my life before this happened. So I'm going to actually thank you and be grateful for some of the best moments I've ever had in my life. Cause you probably had those at the start of the relationship or the middle of it. If you're lucky, you did. And then it all went shit at the end. But by holding on and dwelling on the shit and forgetting about anything that's good robs you of all of your power within that situation. So by actually, you know, acknowledging it, you know, by blaming consciously, God, I'm going to give you credit for this, actually, just really stops that, you know, I don't know, that, that kind of beat down you have on yourself every single day. And you win all the power back and when you accept responsibility as well. And you go, actually, I'm accountable for my career, my life. If I'm, if I'm not happy, it's because of every decision I've made to this point. So actually, if I make better quality decisions, I'm in control. I can win this back. I'm not powerless. I'm not, I'm not not in an acting job because of him or her or that director or that casting director. Maybe there's something I could do, a different strategy I could you know, deploy. Um, so I just think dwelling, yeah. You know, it's, I say it's different, it's different to accepting and acknowledging negativity and articulating that that's healthy and a positive way of processing it but dwelling i'm just like just don't think it's it's the way forward really and um, kelly says so excited for this kelly please fill out the survey at on this tv forward slash survey i would love to um i would love to know what uh you know what we can help you with on the weekend i want 50 quid on a slot machine once says alex alex <laughs> that's straight up gambling isn't it though slot machines are dangerous it, back in the day i worked at the trafford center and there was an amusement arcade right next to where the taxis were and at Christmas when I was getting a taxi home and the queue for the taxis was like an hour long I'd go oh you know what I'm gonna because it was cold out there I'm gonna go and just have a look in the arcade and like you know just sort of hang out there for a little bit till it gets warm and the and the, uh, and the queue goes down sometimes could very quick I was only on five pounds 75 an hour could easily lose three or four hours wages in there and then go what have you done you just worked eight hours and you just gave half of it away <laughs> playing silly little slot machines i won occasionally but yeah it's not the way forward uh josh has nothing on lottery but i made a profit of 100 quid the other week at the casino we're all gambling addicts bloody hell ashley said to hit the jackpot waking up every day yeah that's a good <laughs> see that's not dwelling ash that's a good that's a good perspective to have everyone's if you every day above ground is a great day if there's air in my nostrils it is a great day um Keep trying to get the survey up, but can't to Sally Ann. Can anyone else get the survey up? Actonthis.tv forward slash survey. S-U-R-V-E-W. Actonthis.tv forward slash survey. Let me go over to that webpage and refresh it and see if it indeed works. Actonthis.tv forward slash survey. Yeah, it's there. It's definitely there. Let me know if it's there for everybody. Uh, one thing to let you know about, by the way, because it's a Google form, when you submit it, if you're on mobile... The, um, the confirmation message will end up being right back at the top of your screen, but it might look like a blank screen on mobile because you've got to scroll all the way back up to, up to the top to see it. It's not a very good design from Google Forms, um, but you have submitted it, so don't worry about it. Just scroll up to the top of the page and it'll say thanks for your submission or whatever. Um, so it is there, uh, Sally. Just make sure that... Uh, 
yeah, just if someone else could let me know, that'd be good. That's on this at CV forward slash survey. Kerry says, does the weekend course cover nerves and second guessing yourself? I've become so anxious over auditions having been away from in the room tonight for so long. Yeah, I mean, we're going to cover all of that. If ultimately, whatever you put down on that survey, Kerry, if you could fill it in for us, me and Matt are going to cover. There's there's certain like real foundational fundamental frameworks that you know we're gonna we're gonna coach people on and teach some stuff that absolutely changed my life and stuff that has changed matt's life as well um but then the reason i'm from the survey is i want to tailor it to those people who are going to be there um so uh yeah do let us know but yeah we'll definitely second guessing um you know we, that's basically sort of in in positive psychology um, that's sort of like a, a a negative visualization of you know of the future and it's and it's you, i'm gonna play a clip out at the end of this today that I hope people understand. It's a clip from of me and Matt talking about people's fear and particularly actors' fear of judgment of other people. And what you will find in life if you are afraid of other people's judgment is this will happen, okay? I have to say it in the first person for people to maybe understand it. But if I said to you, listen, Kerry, I am not what I think I am. I am not what you think I am. If I care about, you know, all of like the opinions of you and, and, and how you might judge me, I am what I think you think I am. So does that make sense? So I end up living a life. So I'm not what I think I am. Equally, I'm not what you think I am because I don't know exactly what you think I am. I end up living my life and being what I think you think I am. So I'm guessing at what you think I am or how you're going to judge me. And then I end up living my life and my actions through that. Oh, I won't post that on Twitter because Kerry might not like it. So even though my authentic self I'm inspired to post something. Inspire. The word inspire means in spirit. If you're inspired, sometimes you'll get a little spark in your head and you go, oh God, I'm going to send an email to that person. I'm going to message that person. I'll tweet that person. Do it instantly because your brain will start talking you out of it within five seconds usually. But if you're inspired, you're in spirit. Your spirit is literally calling you to go, Kerry, send that email. Do that thing. Um, so do that because you know that's, that, that is you know what you authentically want to do. But very often, you know, you will end up doing things based on what you think a casting director or an agent or even your own agent. You know, it might be your agent or your mum or your brother or your partner. Oh, I won't do that because, you know, acting is not a real career. And yeah, you know, my mum might, you know, not, not, not really like that or something. I mean, just bullshit. But you end up living a life where you're not yourself. You're not what the other person really thinks you are because you don't know. And they're not that bothered generally most of the time. They're too busy dealing with their own shit. But you do end up living a life where you are what you think other people think you are. And that sounds a bit sort of meta and a bit weird, but you've got to be careful. You've got to be careful. Um, Kerry says, I'm so good at talking the talk and bringing people up to build confidence, but in a casting situation, I'm nervous, right? Yeah, and that is generally based on, on the fact that you're worried about what people are going to think of you. No one has ever died from forgetting their lines or screwing up a casting. I don't think, anyway. <laughs> so I don't know why we get so nervous about these things. It's, it's really sort of like, I say, negative visualization. Um, it's about asking poor quality questions. It's about going in disempowered. Um, you know, if you walk into an audition, and we, we'll cover this on the weekend as well. I know it sounds airy-fairy, and I've mentioned this before, so apologies if, if people are bored of me saying this right now, but incantations in terms of positive self-talk when you're going into a high pressure stressful situation is so important i literally will walk into the room or through the door anyway and i know it sounds bonkers this and you'll go you're an idiot woke weird you know that just sounds so crazy but i'm, I'm in my head i'm going everything i need is within me now and i have the courage to see it through everything i need is within me now and i have the courage to see it through and obviously i've done the work i've done the prep for the audition i wouldn't really be able to say that if i'd done no prep and didn't know my lines so i do the work beforehand um but so many actors do the work are completely capable of crushing their audition but on the way in their incantations are incantations they're they're, they're you know saying things to themselves like Oh God, that guy in the in in the in the receptions better looking than me. Oh, he's been in casualty, so he's probably going to get the job. Um, oh, don't forget your lines. Don't forget your lines. Your mind's incapable of actually, you know, comprehending negatives in terms of don't. If I said to you all on air, it's cliched, isn't it? It's the, it's the example everyone used. But if I go, Kerry, everyone on air, don't think of a pink elephant. Don't think of a pink elephant. Don't think of a pink elephant. Every single person who just listens to this or just watch this has just seen a pink elephant in the red. I don't care who you are. Don't think of a red car. Don't think of a red car. Don't think of a red car. 
you just all thought of a red car. So going into an audition going, don't forget your lines. Don't forget your lines. All you're actually saying to your subconscious is forget your lines, forget your lines. Worry about forgetting your lines, forget your lines. And what do you do? It's very much a self-fulfilling prophecy. Your mind is so powerful. It's literally everything. It's absolutely everything. If you ever go into a situation saying to yourself, don't do something, you're going to do it. It's why when people are learning how to ski, you know, and you get these, these Olympians who ski through forests and stuff like that, they're trained, you know, to focus on the gaps between the trees, not the trees. If you, if, you, if you go down a slope going, don't hit the tree, don't hit the tree, don't hit the tree, you're just focusing on the trees and you're going to hit the tree, right? You might have done it reversed into a parking space. Don't hit the bollard. Don't hit, oh, shit, I just hit the bollard. Um, you got to, It would be way better, you know, to your, to your subconscious and your conscious mind to go, you know, reverse into the gap, reverse into the gap, reverse into the gap because <laughs> you're focusing on the gap, not the bollard. Um, so it's so fascinating the way people just end up Oh, just just cultivating the thing they don't want in a high pressure environment um definitely so um you know it's uh it's an interesting one nick won 250 quid on the health lottery last week nick crushing it how much did you have to put on for that though um hopefully you only put a quid on or something like that david says ross you're talking about overthinking in your head about a situation or issue you have been involved in otherwise ruminating over and over again in your mind i'm not gonna go uh going down this road and this usually stops it yeah you could absolutely you know you know, you you can, uh, there's absolutely, you know, it's just really taking control consciously of what you want to happen. Because if you, if you don't, if you're not conscious and if you're not, if you, I, I always try and set my intention as well before I go into a room, before I even get on this broadcast tonight, I'm like, what is my intention for this evening? My intention is to leave people who watch this, whether it's live or on the replay, better than I found them. As simple as that. That's my intention. So I have very clear intentions. If your intention is to leave the people in the audition room better than you found them, charge them up with your energy don't apologize for any of your actions within the room as an actor the amount of times i've sat in auditions with casting directors reading in for them for parts opposite these people auditioning and people have come in within 10 seconds have apologized for their cough oh i've got a bit of a sore throat i'm sorry if i sound husky oh i've had a really you know sleepless night i'm sorry i'm a little bit late it's all negative and straight away you're bringing the room down set your intention to charge the room up so often you will win jobs particularly smaller roles by just being a great person in the room you know, so many people can do the two lines as the nurse. He's like, yeah, Mr. Jones, here's your prescription, blah, 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 in Coronation Street, something like that. I don't know. You can all do it. So a lot of jobs are won on the back of being great and being the person who's going to charge the setup and be fun to work with. Um, so again, set your intention to leave every every interaction you have with someone in the day, whether it's the barista at Costa or an agent or a casting director or whatever, just, just be simple. Like, I'm going to leave you just 1% better than I found you. And, you. and life gets good really quite quick. Um, Andrew says, got to go, but thanks for being here, Andrew. Cheers, mate. Don't forget, acts on this.tv forward slash survey. Fill that survey and it mean the freaking world. Um, definitely. Um, can you put a link to, uh, in the chat? If someone could put a link in the chat, that'd be great. Thank you, Alex has already done it. He's on it. Just below your comment there, Sarah, in the uh, in the chat. Um, nice one. I'm sorry if I'm missing uh, so many comments because there's quite a lot coming through. So uh, so apologies if I've not read uh, read anybody's comment out that you've left it. Facebook doesn't show me them all. Um, Sally Ann says, correct, Ross, the mind doesn't understand the word don't. No, it doesn't, does it? It doesn't. It's not until you realize that you go, oh, God, I've been telling myself, I've, I've had the wrong strategy my whole life. I've been telling myself not to do things where I should be actually telling myself what I want to do. You know, it's um, it is an interesting one, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to this uh, this event. We're probably going to do um, some. We're going to do a uh, a live event for free, just like an hour and a half, like a 90 minute training. Me and Matt sometime in September, um, and then on that, at the end of that training, we're probably going to end up then opening up registration for the full event. Um, pricing, I've no idea yet. I still got to talk to Matt about that this week. It will be fully recorded though, so you're going to get access to that forever, um, effectively. And there will be follow-up support as well because I don't just want to bring people on this and then just go, right, see you later. Um, you will be equipped, to be honest. You'll, you know, there'll be workbooks. You'll be, you'll be given a lot of, you know, a lot of support, obviously, over that full weekend and you can watch the replay back. But I do think I would like it if we actually supported actors after that, even if it's just for two months, we just go, right, for the next eight weeks, you've got access to a pop-up Facebook group. It's not going to be around forever. But, you know, let's iron out some of these limiting beliefs you're already having in your life. These beliefs that you are honoring as your own that were never meant to be your own. A lot of people say to me as well, well, I'm like, you know, I think a lot of a lot of people have limiting beliefs around what they can and can't achieve put on them by other people. But then you'll get the odd person who says to me, no, it's myself. I just have a massive downer on myself. I sabotage myself. 
And I still wish people realized that, you know, you weren't born with that belief of sabotaging yourself in your head. Someone still at some point has put that in there. As a kid, you don't sabotage yourself. You just don't. When you look at kids playing, sometimes, you know what? I'll be laying, if I ever stay at my girlfriend's house, I'll be laying in bed. And sometimes her nieces, they're only they're only really young, like six and seven, they, they uh, will be staying there as well. And sometimes I'll hear them playing. I'll be laying in bed and I'll hear them playing outside on the landing. And like, their imaginations when they're playing these games and the the language they're using, like good, <laughs> I don't mean bad language, but like just the fact that they're like they're so imaginative and they're so playful and they're so creative and they don't give a shit what anybody thinks or whether I'm overhearing them, you know, play some you know game where it's like right, you're my daughter, I'm your mom, and you know they're just playing and they're re- they're acting ultimately, they're just acting. They're just playing a role and they're all having the time of their life. And it's like, you know, they weren't born. And thankfully, up to this point right now, they've not had those limiting beliefs put in their head. But they will have them put in their head if they're not careful by kids at school, teachers, you know, other adults, um, you know, bullies, shit like that. And then if they're not careful, they end up honoring that belief for the rest of their life. You know, it happens so often. You'll be told something at 11 or 12 and you're at 35, 40, 50, 60, 70, you'll still believe that thing that you're just, you know, your IQ is not that good. Your big bones, your body composition, you know, isn't what you would like it to be. All this stuff, um, you know, that's just so limiting over people's lifetimes. It's um, it's a real shame. So, um, yeah, I think this event, honestly, could improve the rest of your life for the rest of your life. Like, honestly, it's priceless in that sense. You know, if you come away from that event, with tools and strategies to an, a, annihilate things that have been holding you back for years so you could live a better life for literally the rest of the time you spend on earth. Um, it's pretty priceless and that's what I, uh, I really want to deliver to people. Um, Andrea says, I'm working on getting rid of toxic echoes of the past with a life coach. The present is so powerful. Yeah, no, honestly, like it really is um, so easy to uh, fall into the trap of of allowing, like, like I said before, it is almost like dwelling on things that have happened years and years and years ago and feeling powerless to actually, you know, realize that your the, it's as simple as this, your past does not equal your future. It's just as simple as that, you know. And when you realize that life can can change very, very quickly. But what a lot of people do is get stuck in a rut. So I try and illustrate this by getting people to think of a tractor. If you imagine like a tractor with massive wheels, and say like a farmer gets in this tractor each morning and drives it to the field. Maybe he does it for seven days on the trot. And he goes the exact same route and creates these big ruts, these big divots in the in the mud, effectively, these big tractor tires. He will get to a point, or she will get to a point, where um, they can literally get into that tractor, turn it on, hit the accelerator, take the hands off the steering wheel, and those ruts, those divots in the in the ground will just drive that tractor to the same destination that they've always been driving to over those last seven days. And people do this in their life. You know, they they allow life to beat them down and create these big ruts in their life and they end up in the same place each time. And they're like, I don't understand why I always end up here. And then what happens is they take their hand off the steering wheel and every day they get up and they end up in that same place. Whereas if they just put their hand back on the steering wheel, took control of their life a little bit, turned it five degrees to the right, that would all, that's all it requires, not a massive change, five degrees. They drove, say they drive for half an hour, they might not end up in a massive different place. But if they drove on that five degree turn to the right for 30 days, just one month, my God, they would end up in a completely different destination. And that's kind of the analogy that I use for people's lives. Maybe you've just taken your hand off the steering wheel and you've just ended up in the same destination for the same day for too long. And you're like, right, now I'm ready to put my hand back on the steering wheel and turn myself out of these ruts that I've created in my life. And I'm going to end up in a completely different destination if I commit to this for 30 days. Um, 60 days ideally i mean 30 days they reckon in positive psychology you know is, is roughly the time that it that it takes to create a positive habit um within that 30 days though, there'll be many many times you'll be dragged down it's called habit gravity where you know things will get hard if it's working out you know the first week or so you'll be really excited about it. you've got your new gym kit and everything but then day 12 you twinge your shoulder and you go oh might just have tomorrow off and then you have tomorrow off and you think oh well actually you know what it's friday tomorrow so i'll just i'll go back on monday and then before you know it, Sunday night, you're like, oh, God, I don't really want to go to the gym now. This habit gravity is pulling you down. If you are consistent in your efforts and you you do that thing that, you know, you're trying to create a habit around every single day, there comes a point where you hit something called escape velocity, where you've done it so much, it actually becomes such a part of your life. If you don't do it, you miss it. But you've got to do it so consistently. 
Um, you know, so that's a thing as well. Maybe you've just got yourself, you know, in bad habits and you need to create new ones. So it's a really interesting one. I can't wait for it. First time I've caught for ages, says Joe. It's a positive for a Monday evening. Yes, Joe. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I've talked about a survey tonight, Joe. I don't know if you just jumped on, but actonthis.tv forward slash survey. It's a mindset survey. I would love you to take it if you could uh, if you could do that for me. That would be uh, really, really useful. Um, let's have a look. What else am I missing here? Einstein's definition of insanity, doing the same thing again and again, expecting different results, says Andrea. Yeah, it's so true. I don't know if that, if Einstein actually said that. People attribute that to him, but there's been a lot of uh, talk over the years. Going, he never actually said that, but still a very valid point. You know, in the acting industry, sending the same show reel out, the same headshot, the same email over and over and over again when you didn't get a reply or anything the last six times you sent it out, that is insane. You know, expecting a different result. It's never, ever going to happen. Um, Kerry says, uh, honestly, I have to say, Ross, uh, I'm pretty positive and forward thinking, but tuning in tonight has been so affirming. I'm actually so pumped. Yes. <laughs> I love it. No, honestly, and it pumps me up, you know, sharing this stuff as well, because this is all stuff that's really huge. I went through a fucking rubbish time in my life in 2006 my dad died i found out i was losing my eyesight like oh, it was all just shit and i was working for minimum wage in a toy shop hating my life running away at the weekend drinking far too much and i got really heavily into positive psychology and i got upset to be honest i got obsessed with it i just i, I read dozens and dozens and dozens of books i used to run even run a book club perhaps on this where i would read positive psychology books to members on these live broadcasts for years and um, we don't do that anymore but maybe I should, I should bring that back um, and implementing this stuff. So not just talking about it, but really actionably implementing this stuff into my life. It changed everything. I'm almost allergic to negativity now. It's a, it turns me off so much. The second I hear people complaining, you can learn a lot about somebody. It, when you have a coffee with them or whatever, you meet them for the first time, just, just, just note how many times they complain about something within the first 30 minutes of meeting them. And that, for me, really dictates whether I want to keep that person in my life or not. Um, because... You want to you want to create a, a circle of people around you who are battery chargers, who really charge your batteries, who are inspiring, who are motivated. Ideally, you'll have some people in your life who are five to twenty five years ahead of you in the industry you want to succeed in, or whatever. Maybe they've achieved the things you want to achieve, and then equally, you get an awful lot through your life through contribution. It's a real human need. So then you want to pass on what you're learning to other people. And you know, I learned so much from others, and I've, it's changed my life like so much. Like, I, like. I can't begin to tell you like how different my life is now. And I'm ridiculous, like, ridiculously grateful for it. But being able to then pass that on to other people and then getting the emails from other people that are like, oh my God, like, you know, you just, you know, even that one thing, you know, maybe I'll sometimes I'll, I'll get a, a, an email from someone who listens to one podcast and like that one thing in there, you know, led to like a butterfly effect. I did this, which led to this, which led to this. And now I'm, you know, I'm out of that shit job and I'm doing a TV job or whatever it is. It's like, it's incredible. So it's quite selfish, really. Um, I get a real buzz out of, <laughs> out of getting emails like that. So if anyone's listening to this and something has helped you, please let me know. I really, uh, I really would like to know. Um, Kerry said, the battery chargers are my kin. The others, they can jog on. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Laura says, thanks for this evening's chat. Thank you, uh, Laura. Appreciate you being here. Um, so, yeah, so I'll wrap up now, but I'll play this clip out uh, from Matt Hall. Um, it just is, is, this is not really science, but positive psychology that we're talking about in this clip. This is just sort of like to show you Matt's quite no-nonsense approach. Um, there is a little bit of swearing in it, so apologies for that. But you know what? It's just real talk. I don't like, you know, airy-fairy you know, oh, let's just all just, I don't know, there, there, just think positive thoughts and everything's going to be okay. It doesn't work like that. Life is not like that. I like actionable, implementable strategies, things that you can literally put into your life today, this hour, to start making a difference, to start making you feel even 2% better. You know, just sometimes that 2% will, will put you up at a threshold where you will take some action that you wouldn't have otherwise taken. Maybe someone's listening to this or watching this and like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to send that email that I was afraid to send today because um, I don't need permission from anybody else. If I want to ask for life for something, I'm going to ask for something from life. I always say, you know, what is it you're asking for? You know, life will pay any price you ask of it, but what are you asking for? And so few people are asking for what they really want in life. You know, you've got to start asking for uh, more and giving value in order to get it. Reciprocity is a real thing, but um, 
but you know you can ask for more from your life you are only here for a short amount of time you're absolutely entitled to ask for things you might have to work hard to get them but that's okay so i'm going to play a uh, a clip out from matt now which is just talking about judgment and that thing i said before you know if you are scared of other people's judgment you end up being not what you think you are not what they actually think you are you end up being what you think they think you are you live a very inauthentic life you're scared to do anything um, so that's a clip about that. And then I'll just recap as well before I play that clip for you. I'll go over to the website again. Actonthis.tv forward slash survey, S-U-R-V-E-Y. Fill this in for me. It mean the world. Just want to know what is holding you back when it comes to your psychology and your mindset. I want to really help you cultivate a champion's mindset, a bulletproof mindset to just help you get out of your own way. Um, and then the waiting list for the weekend. It's probably only going to be 100 tickets for this, guys, by the way. It's not going to be a big event. Um because we really want to serve people, you know, relatively on a personal level. Um, but act on this.tv forward slash bulletproof. B U L L E T P R O O F. <laughs> bulletproof. Act on this.tv forward slash bulletproof. And just fill this form and you'll get a little email from me going, right, you're on the waiting list. You're going to be the first people to be able to buy tickets. We're going to um, give people on the waiting list like uh, probably a full 24 hours to get tickets before anybody else. Uh, plus, you're going to get access to a free training as well in September. That even if you don't want to come on the course, uh, you don't want to come on the weekend, I really hope like a 90-minute free training from me and Matt's really going to help you anyway. Uh, so that's on this.tv forward slash survey. That's on this.tv forward slash bulletproof. If you want to get a £1 trial to act on this, it's on the screen there. Act on this.tv forward slash trial. Come and kick the tyres on the 200 hours worth of content in the members area for just £1 for seven days. You'll get access to uh, at least one live event that week as well because we do live events every single week um, on Zoom. So check that out. Um, oh, oh God, there's so many things. I promise people... I promise people if you stay until the end, you're going to get a link to something that I'm going to put out tomorrow, but you're going to get it now. Let me just bring this up on the on the page. Uh, if let me, I've got to make sure it's live. So tomorrow, I'm launching a podcast that I recorded with Nicola Schindler, seven times BAFTA winning producer Nicola Schindler. She's produced some of the biggest dramas in the world. This is launching tomorrow. Normally, it would be a, a act on this member only web uh, member only podcast, but this one was so good in terms of it's so new, it's so different in terms of the other chats that I've had. I'm putting it out for a limited time, only a limited time for free for everybody so you can go and look at this right now if you're here live okay uh, you can watch this tonight before you go to bed if you want if you go to actonthis.tv forward slash nicola you will see this page here you can watch the video or you can watch uh i listen to the audio only um but it's a 60 minute deep dive with nicola one of the most successful producers one of the most powerful people in tv basically um it's not dropping for everyone else until tomorrow morning, but act on this.tv forward slash Nicola if you want to uh, access that. So sorry, there's so many links there, isn't there? Basically, act on this.tv forward slash survey, forward slash bulletproof, forward slash trial, <laughs> or forward slash Nicola <laughs> to get access to all that good stuff. So much content um, for you guys. So here's just a little clip from Matt's webinar. The the full access to this, basically, if you get an, if you get a trial as well, you'll get access to the full two-hour session with Matt already in the members area, plus an exclusive podcast I've done with Matt as well. Uh, but Matt is going to be doing this weekend with me uh, for the Bulletproof Factor weekend. So thank you. I'll play this now. I'm just going to double check any other comments before I uh, before I go. Uh, Alex says, Bob Proctor said, no intelligent action can come from a negative vibration. Yeah, based on science, if energy is in a negative vibration, it must move into a negative form. I just think like, you know, I'm really science backed. I need science. I'm not just like, oh, the secret. I'm just going to wish for, wish for a million pounds. I'm going to get it. Um, I need science. There is occasionally, though, there's things that I cannot explain. You know, it's, it's funny, isn't it? How we, so um, cynical people when it comes to mindset and stuff, victims who just basically want to be a victim their entire life about society treats me badly, the industry treats me badly, everything's bad, 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 I've got no control over my life. Those people, like, they'll they'll gladly believe and and just take it as total total normal that, that the Wi-Fi router in their corner of their room next to their telly can beam invisible signals to their piece of glass in their hand and they can watch this video on it right now. So invisibly, my face, my audio, it's going through the atmosphere, completely invisible to their router, from their router to a piece of glass in their hand and they can watch it now. And they're like, yeah, that's cool, it's just Wi-Fi. And yet they don't believe that the, the brain inside their head, which is infinitely more powerful than that router could ever wish to be, they don't believe that the invisible 
you know, signals that their brain can send out. They don't believe that they can have any impact on anything else in the world and that there's nothing else out there that can pick those vibrations up or those signals up like that piece of glass, like that phone and transcode them into something else. There's, you know, I, science, I can't explain that to you, but I know when I am thinking positive things, good things in my life happen. When I'm looking for negative and I'm thinking negative things, shit things in my life happen, I attract it. And I don't know what that is. I can't prove it to you, but I just know when I'm grateful, when I look at the gifts in life, when I look for the good in bad situations that I'm not currently seeing, I know that my life gets better. So for all the negative Nancys who are like, yeah, you know, like it's bullshit. Like you don't think your Wi-Fi route is bullshit and you're probably on it now, you know, maybe looking at negative news on the internet if you're not watching this. But like your brain is powerful, man. Like it really is. It's your mindset and your psychology really is absolutely everything. Um, oh, I've just realized <laughs> this is terrible. My laptop has just gone off, so I can't actually end this broadcast. I'm going to have to get my my plug and plug this in. I'm going to play this clip, hopefully from Matt, whilst I'm plugging this in. And by the end of this broadcast, I should be able <laughs> to end it for everybody. I've got to do this within two minutes. So sorry, I can't read any of your comments. Tag me and I'll read them afterwards. But this is Matt Hall. He's going to be doing this event with me. This is a very, probably non-scientific piece on judgment, but it's true, real talk. And we're going to do a lot more of this, backed by science, though, on the weekend of October the 1st and the 2nd. So that's on this.tv forward slash bulletproof. Get on the waiting list. That's on this.tv forward slash survey. Fill the survey in and I'll see you in a bit. Love to you all. Bye for now. How can we stop fearing judgment and other people's opinions? Perspective shift. Nobody actually gives a about you. And I mean that in the nicest way possible because everyone's too concerned about their own shit. Like they care yeah. more about themselves than they do about you. So it's exactly what Ross says. You are not what you think you are. You're not what others think you are. You are what you think others think you are. But what others think of you is probably not true. And actually they're more bothered in what's going on in their life. You've got to remember that nobody who ever got successful didn't get opinions about them, didn't get judgment. So if you fear judgment, like, just accept you can't be successful or figure out a more positive relationship with judgment. A problem that we've got as actors is we play a popularity game and not just actors, people generally like to be liked, right? Yep. We want self-acceptance, or sorry, other people's acceptance. We want to be liked. The worst game you can play is the popularity game. Like, stand for something, get clear on who you are and what you want out of this world and how you're going to get it and unapologetically be that. But understand perspective, you can't stand for something, you can't do something strong, and you can't get a strong result without polarizing people's viewpoints. Why? Because logically, everybody's different. You cannot be liked, loved, accepted, embraced, understood by everybody. So you've got to think, well, I want big things out of this life. And in order to get it, I'm going to polarize viewpoints. You can't get the success without the hate, not because it's your fault, because that's human psychology. People generally, you know, are drawn to negativity and bitching and moaning and whining and comparing and bringing others down. It's always going to happen. The worst thing you should do is focus on that. Accept it, embrace it, understand it's going to happen. And you just focus on one foot in front of the others. Keep on moving forward. Stay in your own lane. See people for where they're at. It tells you more about them and their life if they take any moment out of their day yep. to write something negative about somebody doing their best. Yeah.